Hi, I'm Commissioner Nancy Jester and welcome to Nancy Jester Reports for Tuesday, September 11, 2018. Uh, today obviously is a solemn day as we remember the 17th anniversary of the terrible, uh, tragic um, terrorist attack uh, in New York and in uh, Pennsylvania uh, and at the Pentagon um, on this terrible day 17 years ago. I was able to participate this morning in the DeKalb County remembrance of that uh, tragedy and I just want to say that um, uh, it, it is um, an amazing tribute that the police and fire departments put together for this solemn day. Uh, I have participated with them before on this uh, day and they truly represent the best of us. I know that it's a heavy day for all of us. Um, we did meet today, uh, and uh, last week we met as well. I did not um, do a video last week. I ran out of time, so I wasn't able to do that. So we're going to cover two weeks of meetings in this video. So that would be the meeting from September 4th, and then we also, again, had one today, uh, September 11th. Before I get to those meetings, I do want to bring up um, this. This is the um, draft version of the Independent Assessment of DeKalb County Purchasing and Contracting Program. Um, the, you might hear me uh, refer to it as the Procurement Department. Um, this came to us last week, and again, this is just the, the first draft of this report. I commend the internal auditor on selecting this firm and moving this audit forward and now we have the first draft. The administration uh, will be able to make comments. Uh, they will be able to um, cite issues they have disagreements with if there's a disagreement in fact that can be looked at. And a final version will eventually be prepared. But this discussion is weighs very heavily on me. Um, in, uh, in one of the uh, paragraphs, they, they talk about the um, the free lunch is the gateway drug to corruption, and that's very true. So when we have people in the procurement process that are essentially uh, getting and, and allowed to get under the rules of DeKalb County perks uh, and benefits from vendors that are doing work with DeKalb County, uh, we're off to the races with problematic uh, procurement um, issues. There are a lot of problems in here, everything from documentation being really sketchy to um, the need to have auditors review uh, procurements of large value. Uh, the recommendation is made in here that, that over a million dollar procurement should have an independent auditor review and uh, so that we can, as commissioners before we vote, have some reliance on what we're looking at. The records would have been checked by an auditor for process, for accuracy, uh, for fidelity to policy, and uh, assurance that the files are robust and documented well. Uh, I think this is a great recommendation. There are a number of recommendations in this particular report that I intend to uh, bring before the Board of Commissioners that I hope that we can adopt. Because quite frankly, going forward, at that threshold of a million dollars, based on what I'm reading here, I, uh, I have no reliance that any uh, vote on a procurement is based on um, highly documented, robust adherence to policy. And so I intend certainly to um, not vote at this point for procurements going forward that are in excess of a million dollars until we get that recommendation put in place. So there are a number of uh, objectives I think that the Board of Commissioners uh, need to work on. Uh, from this audit, it gives us a roadmap of policies and ordinances that we can put in place if we have the political will to do so. I intend to have that discussion, frankly, with my colleagues and try and move forward in immediately improving the procurement processes in DeKalb County. Uh, some of the things that Atlanta is doing to um, get confidence again in their procurement structure are they have some ideas we need to take a look at like the independent auditors review for procurements over a million dollars, uh, bid protest policies that help um, the procurement process and illustrate problems without having to go to courts that so that we can correct and make sure our procurement processes are, um, are correct and again robust. So. I'm very concerned about this. I think everybody's hair should be on fire about this in DeKalb County. Mine certainly is. This is not a good picture. 
and this is a leadership failure. And they use those words in this document. Uh, the chief procurement officer that we have is a current appointee of the current CEO. I think that we need some serious um, changes in that department, and I hope that the CEO does look into making those changes so that folks in DeKalb County have reliance on how their tax dollars is spent, are spent. I, um, I know that you work hard for every dime that you have, and every dime you pay in taxes to DeKalb County government needs to be um, used appropriately and with the respect uh, that you deserve because you worked hard for your money and you paid taxes to this government. Um, knowing or believing that we should um, be fair and accurate and not wasteful and abusive of your tax dollars. So I intend to move forward in that direction. Um, on to the meetings that we had. So on September 4th, we met as a Committee of the Whole where we get information and presentations, uh, but we don't uh, take votes on those meetings. We had an interesting meeting or an interesting presentation from um, the ATL, that's the uh, new transit um, entity that will encompass MARTA and a whole lot of other things. Um, I found it really interesting. It's so complex, the whole process to actually get a board. There's all kinds of things that go on to actually even just nominate people to be on the board uh, of the ATL. The process of, uh, for that is ongoing. I think their deadline is December 1st. They have to have that in place and sometime before the beginning of the year, we should see um, an initial board meeting for the ATL. I, um, I'm concerned about DeKalb's representation on it. Uh, DeKalb is cut into a number of different districts, so I'm not really sure the implications of all this at this point. I don't think anybody is until we see how it all plays out um, and how these this entity interacts with MARTA and other um, entities. We're not gonna really know, um, I think, fully the implications of this big, big legislative change in transit by creating the ATL. So that will be interesting. Um, we also received an interesting presentation about from the Parks, uh, Recreation and Parks Department about Sugar Creek Golf and Tennis. So we maintain a couple of uh, golf courses here in DeKalb County and it, it's the finances of them are just fascinating to me. Uh, Sugar Creek has had a number of issues with maintenance over the years and, and just the just general operations and so our new um, parks department head went through and, and did a presentation for us about some changes he would like to see um, and and put forward for um, for the operation of that it just struck me at the end of uh, this five-year plan starting in 2019 through 2023 even um, increasing significantly increasing the number of rounds being played from 13,000 next year to 24,000 in 2023, the net operating income is still gonna be a loss of about half a million dollars. I'm concerned about um, DeKalb County um, getting in the business of subsidizing golf or anything. I mean, I think that if we're going to have programs, they need to pay for themselves. So I'm, um, while I'm, I'm just not sure this is the, the line of business DeKalb needs to be in, so I'm gonna need some more information on that. I do not like that we will be at a position where uh, a function of the county is gonna be losing half a million dollars. I, I, I don't think that's a good idea. Um, we met today as a um, uh, in our full business meeting where we did vote on things. We had a number of procurement items. Most um, were not over that million dollar um, threshold. I did uh, vote on all the items uh, and I intend uh, in the next cycle to really take a hard look again at voting on those items of the million dollars or more and, and we'll uh, most likely refrain from doing so uh, until we can put in some of these uh, recommendations from this audit that we talked about at the beginning of this video. Um, so let's see, we did that. Um, we talked about, one of the things we talked about last week in our uh, Public Works Committee was reallocating some water sewer bonds based on projects, uh, the reality of where projects are. Uh, so it's just simply moving some money out of projects that have either finished or we've paid for with other funds or they've been deemed not necessary or they've been you know, integrated into something else. Moving funds out of those types of things and putting them in other uh, projects uh, that need those funding. So 
line item by line item uh, at our PWI meeting last week. I was fine with it, but I think it's worthy. Um, it's worth noting to you that these 2011 bonds haven't been fully spent. So that in, has created a negative arbitrage situation, and I've asked for those detailed numbers and analysis to be presented to us. We were supposed to get it today so that we could vote on it. We did not. I realize these are complex um, calculations to do, and there can be discrepancies or, or differences of opinion in the methodologies used. And so I think that folks are having those discussions right now. I anticipate getting those numbers this week so that we defer this item next week, or excuse me, next board meeting, we'll be able to vote on it. Also, just as far as a matter of critique of form, the administration um, gave us today, walked on, a substitute item. Well, you know, this is a very complicated, detailed, line by line item, money from here to there, and you can't hand me an item and ask me to vote on it right then and there without me being able to validate it says exactly what we agreed to in our committee meeting the week before. So I found that poor form. I hope they will stop doing that. Um, Last week, um, we did have uh, our finance committee meeting, and uh, we did have the DeKalb uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau came by and did a presentation for us about their financials. So um, I'm glad they were there. We had hoped they would come uh, the meeting before that, but I do know that there ended up being a, an actual um, a family emergency for um, the presenter. Uh, and so that's why they weren't at that meeting. But they were there uh, at our last meeting. Um, they presented um, a very detailed look at their budget. What we didn't get from them was the actual expenditures compared to the budget. So we got their budget over time, which was very interesting. We talked about it. And I asked them uh, to give us a quarterly report going forward. And the CFO or the interim CFO agreed that she would work with them on that. Uh, a quarterly financial report just like we're doing for the county so that we know where this special tax, where it's going, and how they're being spent. I is it being spent in a way that is um, uh, faithful to the budget that uh, they have, have come up with? Or are there line items that are really uh, out of whack with, uh, with the budget? So we still need to get that information from them, but I think we're going in the right direction, so I'm happy with that. Um, there are a lot of interesting things to note about it. Um, the um, subsidization from Stone Mountain. Stone Mountain, um, they don't get the tax exactly like they get from the other hotel motel entities because it's on a state uh, park, but generally the state uh, gives money to the Convention and uh, Visitors Bureau so they can promote Stone Mountain as a destination. Well, and all the uh, brouhaha about Stone Mountain and the sculpture and so on, uh, that money decreased quite substantially from Stone Mountain, that state park, to the uh, DeKalb Convention and Visitors Bureau. So that was interesting. Um, so we'll keep working on that. Uh, let's see. Today we had our Ops Committee meeting uh, after our board meeting. Uh, we had a few procurement issues, nothing really um, standout-ish. We did meet with um, people from the Animal Services Board and the folks in the administration leading the charge to help align our animal enforcement services in DeKalb with the shelter service. We have had a very, um, um, you know, we've made a concerted effort uh, for the humane treatment of animals with our new shelter, our zero kill policy, um, just improving the lives of animals, making sure that we can adopt out the maximum number of them so that we um, have the lowest euthanasia rates uh, really as the approaching zero essentially. So, but the animal enforcement piece, going out and getting the animals, how we're dealing with them out in the field, um, how we're dealing with the public out in the field, the enforcement component piece as we call it was lacking in their um, sort of culture of humanity. Uh, and so we're trying to align those two cultures, the culture of our shelter, with the culture of our enforcement uh, services. So we've been writing some policies and some documents on that, and we talked about that uh, at length today in the operations committee meetings. So that's all for these two meetings, and I look forward to hearing from you, and stay tuned for the next edition of Nancy Jester Reports.